everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Adrienne from Alice Scraps Wonderland, and I'm going to be sharing with you another process video for a mixed media canvas featuring Tim Holtz's entomology stamps and die set. I'm just starting out by putting some black gesso through a stencil onto a black canvas that's 9 by 12 in size. getting about two-thirds of the canvas, the top two-thirds of it. Um, I want to place some torn paper on the bottom portion, so I'm not going to put any gesso um, for texture on the bottom part of the canvas. And now I'm just moving on to putting some black gesso onto some metal elements. Um, I'm just going ahead and giving them a base coat um, separately from the canvas. I know a lot of people like to glue everything on and then put gesso on, but because I'll have elements that I won't be coloring with paint or other things that I want to start out white like my stamps, um, I'm going to be coloring or adding gesso separately to my elements. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a couple coats on these. Um, just to make sure I get a really good coating of gesso on them. And in between, feel free to dry your elements as long as they aren't made of hot glue. You should be able to use your heat gun on them. I'm done with that I use my stamps and I'm just using the black archival ink um, so that when I use watercolors on them later the ink doesn't run and I'm just cleaning my stamps off with a wet wipe I'm done stamping out my images I'm just using some Tim Holtz distress inks and a water brush pen to color in my stamped images and since I'll be cutting them out it doesn't really matter if I'm going over the lines insects in real life have some iridescent shimmer to them so I'm adding some of my Prima watercolors with the metallic sheen. After my stamped images have dried, I'm going to cut apart the stamped images into smaller sections so that it'll fit through my Vagabond machine. To make sure that my dies stay in place while it goes through the machine, I'm just using a little piece of washi tape to hold the die in place onto the paper. Next I'm going to take this piece of acrylic from Basil, it's probably hard to see on the camera, but I'm just going to die cut out each of those insects as well. 
I ended up only using the ones that had wings in the end, but I went on ahead and cut them all anyway. working on that piece of paper that I mentioned earlier and I'm just using my hands to give a torn edge to the piece and then I'm going to start adhering my embellishments um, that I painted with gesso and that way I can cover it. I haven't attached the piece of paper yet but I did want to go on ahead and prep it for when I'm ready to attach it to my canvas. I'm just using heavy body gel to attach the larger pieces. I also used a pop dot on the larger flower. I layered two of those together to get it to come up off of the canvas enough that I could layer these smaller flowers underneath it. And I'm just using a paintbrush and a little bit of water to get rid of the excess adhesive. texture and dimension to my canvas, I'm using Prima's soft gloss gel and some of the art stones. I think these are a great way to add texture and dimension to your canvas whether you decide to paint them or not. my canvas background to have a cohesive look, I'm using some gesso to go over those art stones in preparation for adding my color. To speed up the process of drying, I'm just using my heat gun again. Now I'm on to adding color. I'm just using my splat box and a couple of color mists. And I'm just going to give a good spray over the entire canvas with one of them. And this other one, I've been having problems with the nozzle no matter how many times I clean it out. And so I'm just using a paintbrush to apply the color where I want it. And then to also later add some splatters. And again, I'm just using my heat tool to speed up the dry time. Once that's fully dry, I'm going to adhere the piece of paper that I uh, prepared earlier. I'm just using a spray-on adhesive from Elmer's. I think this works really great so you don't get any wrinkles in your project. And now to add a little bit more dimension to the bugs, I'm coloring the back side of them and also on the front on the edges I'm putting some Distress Ink in Black Soot. And this allows me to um, correct any issues where I may not have lined the dye up completely correctly and allows me to darken the legs up so that you can't see that I may not have quite gotten on the stamped image. 
I'm just cutting off some of the excess acrylic pieces that I don't need for the bugs, like the antennas, so that I don't have to worry about lining it up correctly. And I glue those on all of the ones with wings. And then to add a little bit more sparkle and dimension, I'm just using some glossy accents to adhere some glass glitter. this fun little plate with the word curiosities in it and so to prepare my paper I'm just outlining where it is that I need to have the typed word at so that I can cut it out later properly and make sure that the word actually fits in when I'm typing it with my we are memory keepers typecast typewriter I just love this typewriter it makes it so easy to add text to your projects just erasing my lines after I cut down the piece of paper and I'm going to add again some black soot distress ink. I'm using some glossy accents in the corners just to adhere that piece of paper to the back side of that plate and I'm using the blunt end of my pencil to push it down into the glue. Now I'm just laying out where I want all of my elements to go before I glue them down. Again, I'm super visual and I want to make sure that everything's lined up properly and that it all fits before I start gluing things down. Now I'm just bending those acrylic wings back to give my insects the dimension that I had intended. I just really love the way that this turned out with these layers of the die cuts and the stamp. even more dimension. I'm using foam pop dots. Um, some of them I'm cutting in half so that they'll fit into the smaller or thinner areas of the insects. But this will allow them to be raised up off the back of the canvas without having to use a lot of heavy glues and other elements that I've cut and layered. It's super easy to add dimension to your projects with these foam dots. And once I have all those foam dots applied, I'm just peeling off the backing and sticking those insects down onto my canvas. to add one more metal embellishment and that was one of those adorable pen nibs from Tim Holtz right over the center of that moth. I'm also using the heavy body gel to apply the plate with the word curiosities onto the bottom center. And because this comes with brads and I'm able to poke through the canvas pretty easily, I'm just using a tool to poke through and then add those brads. And in order to keep things from getting smushed while I flatten the back side of the brads, I'm just using two of my um, pots of stuff to hold my canvas up off of the work table. 
Next, I wanted to add a little bit of this golden metallic thread from We Are Memory Keepers and some flowers from the line that matches the paper uh, Primus the Archivist collection that I've had stashed away for a long time. I just love the dark masculine look of this project, but I wanted to add just a tiny bit of femininity to the project with these flowers. I just love that juxtaposition. And now for some finishing touches, I'm just going over some of the high points of this canvas with some of the Prima Golden Metallic Wax. I used my typewriter again to create these little figure numerals to place under each of the insects. I'm just going to use some of Prima's soft gloss gel and a paintbrush to apply some of that adhesive to the back of each of those and press it firmly onto the canvas. Once that's dried, I use some Distress ink and a water brush pen just to give the paper a worn look. But I wanted it to be a little bit different from the Curiosities plate, and so I chose a brown Distress ink this time. I also add some of that color to the white edges and areas of the paper to continue with the worn and aged look. Then to finish everything off, I add a few gems. I really hope you enjoyed this process video. I just love the unique tools and items that Tim Holtz creates for us to use. I think they make some really unique projects. For more inspiration and videos like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up.